everybody, before we get to the Q and A, um, when I did the last video showing the keepsakes, Heaven at Home Pet Hospice got a hold of me and they said you missed something in the bag. So, um, and then I also remembered I didn't show you the keepsake they gave me before they left with Duke. So the one before they left with Duke, the vet did this. See this little box, pretty. And then inside, they did his paw print. And you can put a picture here. So I'm gonna go have his picture uh, put in here. How nice is that? Okay, and that was before they left. But then it was, um, sorry, turn, turn my back on you. Um, they said it's in the bag. And thank goodness I had not thrown the bag away. Oh. Anyway, um, went and looked in the bag and it had fell under the tissue paper. So here it is. How cute is that? That's Duke's nose. I mean, that's his nose. It's a cold, wet nose that would greet me in the morning and at night. How personal and sweet is that? They're keepsakes. They are truly keepsakes. Okay, on to the Q&A. Hi, everybody. I hope you are having a sunshiny day. Don't get that very often in February in Michigan. It's a beautiful sunshiny day. Uh, anyway, what I wanted to do was I wanted to do a uh, Q&A because I've been having a lot of questions about um, putting your pet to sleep at home, the process, um, so I just wanted to answer them and maybe help you make that decision. Again, Heaven at Home Pet Hospice is not sponsoring this video. Their services I paid for myself. So you will see me looking down occasionally because I don't want to miss anything. So the first few questions are Heaven at Home Pet Hospice questions that they get quite often. The first one is, can other pets be present? Yes. Um, as long as they're not creating a distraction or hindering the vet somehow, or, you know, we want the process to be calm and quiet. And, and yes, it does help a pet, you know, pets grieve too. So, you know, if the pet passes peacefully in front of them, uh, least in my opinion it's it's like well they didn't just disappear one day and never come home um they see this um a caveat to that question was um can children be present you know what that is a parent uh answer only you as a parent can answer that if they are uh, emotionally mature enough to um, be able to deal with that. Only you as a parent uh, can say that or determine that for your child. Uh, next question is, how do I make the decision to end life? Uh, in my video, uh, my previous one, I said the quality of life wasn't there. Um, Duke had, uh, I didn't even mention in that video, he had cataracts, he was pretty much blind. Um, the arthritis had gotten so bad he needed help getting up, he didn't want to walk, he didn't want to eat. Uh, but Heaven at Home Hospice, I, I found this later, has a quality of life checklist. So you can go on there and look at that and determine, but Another indicator is, you know, when your pet is struggling, you know in your heart 
when it is time to let them go. But uh, if you do need that checklist, I will put a link below. Uh, and you can go on and find that checklist. Next question. The grief is so much harder than I thought. Um, I, need, I, th I believe I need help. While they also have a pet grief support group that meets uh, once a month, I think it's the first Tuesday of the month again, I will link below um, that you can go and talk. And um, speaking from me, the grief, yeah, that, I mean, I'm, I'm going on the fourth week now without Duke. And it's real. You know, you come, I mean, this is something that you should be ready for. Um, I, Duke was my only dog. So I came home and continue to come home to an empty home. And, uh, it is difficult when you're used to being greeted by a big, loud bark. Uh, and the happy sounds of nails on the floor. Yeah, it is real. It's, it's, it can sometimes be almost suffocating. So if you do need a support group, um, they have it. Uh, also, you know, they have staff that is there and can always, if you want to call and just talk, they can talk with you. Um, when I went to pick up Duke's ashes, uh, they, it was really cool because they, um, the lady that brought him out goes, can I give you a hug? It was like, so sweet. They like became family. They cared for my family. They became family. So if you do need help, um, they are there. I'm sure if you are not in this area and you use another hospice, uh, pet at home hospice, um, they probably have groups too. But also, uh, if you go on Facebook, there are pet loss uh, groups that you can go on and talk. There is help out there. You don't have to feel like, oh, you know, it's just a pet. It's not. It's not just a pet. It's your baby. Okay? Next question. Um, how did the process work? Um, I did a questionnaire online, made the appointment. The vet that came out, uh, super phenomenal, loved her. She was just amazing. Um, she, she came out and she explained what she was going to do. Um, she also examined Duke and yeah, you know, she too agreed it was time. And um, so we got him on his bed, gave him his treats. She gave him the first shot a lot of times they which is just cruel and just stress on the dog at the vet's office. They take them in back and put the catheter in and make them sleepy. And you're not even part of it. They're just all stressing out. You know, they're separated from you and they're getting this done. And they bring back the pet son to sleep. Where here, um, what uh, the vet did was give her or give him a shot that made him sleepy in the back of the neck. And he was so focused on his treats and me loving on him, he didn't even know. And it took a little bit for him to finally fall asleep. And then she let you know, you know, while I was hugging on him and stuff that she was going to put the catheter in, uh, which she did. And um, then you know, she let you know to take as much time as you needed and to let her know when to administer the second shot. 
Um, it was a few minutes. A lot of crying. Um, saying goodbye. Telling him what a good dog he was. And uh, I don't even know how long it was, to be honest. Um, she administered the last shot and it was quick um, and she gave me as much time as I needed. Uh, Duke was a big dog. He weighed in at like 65 pounds. So um, after I had balled myself silly, um, her and I both put him on a stretcher. Um, she covered him up with a big fleecy fur blanket with little paw prints on it. Uh, and then we um, both carried him out to her car, which she had set up so nicely. Um, and she gave me a big hug uh, and then assured me that uh, they would keep him in their possession until it was time for him to go to cremation. Um, and then all those details are figured out before, like, you know, if you want keepsakes, if you want um, a single cremation, or he can be cremated with others, are you getting the ashes back? You figure that out ahead of time. Um, so everything is complete and you don't have to worry or stress about that after your pet is gone. Uh, so the next question, um, what do I do with my pet's things after they're gone? Again, that is something that is up to you. Um, I did not keep Duke's bed. I just, that would, uh, no. I couldn't. Um, I did keep, he had a big furry fleece blanket he really loved. Um, I did keep that. Um, and, um, well, of course, the keepsakes I got back, his collar, um, tough to hair, that type of thing. But he was not a toy dog, so he didn't have toys. Um, his Food and treats I donated. Um, some like the CBD oil and that type of thing, Pam, my friend, um, could use because she has a dog that has some back issues. Um, so she took that, but treats, food was donated. Uh, what do I do with the ashes? Again, that's a personal thing. Um, with me, um, I have other dogs. I mean, I'm 59. Uh, I was thinking about it the other day and it was like, I haven't been without a dog in my life since my early twenties, you know, and I've had to make this decision before. And so I do have their ashes, uh, with me. Uh, I'll probably be cremated. Well, I know I'll be cremated. Um, and then their ashes will be put with me. So we will all be together again. But again, that's, you know, maybe there's a favorite park that you went to. You could spread their ashes or a lake or, you know, your backyard. It, it's, you know... That is a personal thing. Uh, so, and let me see. The last question. Will I get another dog? Uh, like I said, I have not been without a dog since my early 20s. And then before that, I grew up on a farm and we always had dogs. So, uh... Yes, I will get another dog. Uh, just so you know, like Duke, 
he came to me. He just popped up in my feed. Um, at that time, I had Killian, who was 19 years old, and we had lost my corgi. Uh, she had cancer. And I waited until about a year, and then she kind of would see the other dogs and whine a little bit. And, and so it was like, okay, I think she needs a friend now. And uh, it was almost scary. It was like as soon as I had that thought, um, Duke popped up on Facebook in a rescue site. And I seen him and I just knew that uh, he, he needed to be home with us. And so that following weekend, I went and adopted him. And a year later, Killian... Um, I had to say goodbye to her at 20 years old because she had cancer also. So, um, <clears throat> you know, that my dogs all have good long lives. My, I'm so blessed by that. I'm so happy for that. So I'm sure, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sure that, uh, that next fur baby of mine, It'll be the same thing. They will just pop up in my life somehow, and I will know. So I hope this has answered uh, the questions you have. Uh, I will, like I said, link below uh, for the quality of life checklist, the pet grief support, and of course, um, have an at-home pet hospice, their link. And again, they do not sponsor this video. I paid for all of my services. And I hope that this all helps you. If it has, let me know. That, that really makes my heart feel good. If Duke and I could help others. That, that makes my heart feel good. Um, so, this will probably conclude the series uh, until that new fur baby comes into my life. But, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, so you know when new content loads, because... Uh, I, I love to do at home projects. I have my own side business. I go on adventures. I do, uh, races, running triathlon. Um, and this, this is a new project. This is, um, uh, live fierce daily. I believe that that is, that is something I've always believed. Um, uh, my link for, um, Fierce After 50 Life is down below. You can get that on Amazon. And I will also be um, following that up with a second book. Um, so, live fierce. Uh, when everybody hears that, they go, you're going to be angry all day? <laughs> no, live fierce. Fierce is passionate. Live every day passionately. Till next time.